Hi, welcome. It's Dr. Lynn Johnson, and today we're going to talk about whether you really need an antidepressant. Now, who am I to be talking about this? Well, I'm a psychologist, I am not a psychiatrist, which gives me some advantages and some disadvantages, and uh, you can take this simply as a little bit of information before you make a decision about whether you're going to take the antidepressant. Presumably, you have some kind of a depressive disorder right now. Maybe you've been self-diagnosed and you're thinking, what are my treatment options? Maybe you've been to your doctor and he, she wrote a prescription for you. Here it is, here it is, you gotta take this prescription. All right, fine. Now, what I'm gonna talk about today is something that is in the literature. Everybody should know about it. Ah, most people don't know about it. And if you want to go to this actual article, I'll put a link up for the article uh, in the ncbi.nlm.nih.gov. Anyway, it's a big long email address. Not to worry, not to worry. We'll put a link up and you can read it for yourself. Let me tell you a secret. The people who get the best medical treatment are the crankiest patients, the ones that are demanding and questioning, well, doctor, how do you know that this will work? Well, doctor, this, well, doctor, that. I, my internist gave me a simple little prescription the other day, and I said, well, what's the half-life of this drug? And he didn't know. Well, he should know these things. And, and so, because the half-life is how long it takes the drug to go from this level say here's no, none at all, and from this level to this level, how long does it take for half the drug to go out of the system? It's actually a very important question when it comes to dosing. You know, in other words, if I forget to take a dose, should I hurry and take the dose I missed, or should I just write it out because the drug has a long half-life? And so these are good things to know. And frankly, 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 what? The honorary patients like me, well, how do you know this? Well, why are you saying that? We get the best treatment. All right, so here's an article you should know about. When it comes to depression, you can have three levels of depression. Mild, moderate, and severe. Okay, see those? Now, the problem, according to a 2010 JAMA article by Fournier, Derubius, Holland, and a bunch of other people. I don't know. I know who Derubius is. I know who Holland is. I didn't, I, I, I've heard of Jay Fournier, but uh, anyway, here he is. Looky, looky. Basically, it says when it comes to antidepressants, let's switch colors here, huh? I would like a nice green color. There is no no effect from giving antidepressants to people with mild and moderate. Only when you get up into severe range do the antidepressants start to work. Now, you might say, well, how do I know, Lynn, if I have a severe or a moderate or even a mild case of depression? Well, funny you should ask. I happen to have a measure for that. Now, there's an old saying that measurements eliminates argument. And oh, if you're not assessing, then you're just guessing. You know, they have these little cliches like that. But there's a lot of truth to them. This is called the CESD. A lot of your therapists also use something called the Beck Depression Inventory. I don't use it because you're supposed to pay Aaron T. Beck a dime every time you use the Beck, and I don't want to go to that trouble because, well, Tim Beck owns the copyright to the Beck Depression Inventory, and he deserves a royalty. But guess what? I own the copyright to the CESD. Woo and so do you. And that's because the National Institute of Mental Health copyrighted the CESD. Well, what does that mean? It automatically puts it in public domain. So, now, what if your doctor didn't use the CESD? Well, there's a couple of other options. Like I say, the Beck Depression Inventory is a good one. Another one is a structured interview called the Hamilton Rating Scale for Depression. 
I'm a psychologist. I don't like rating scales as well as I like self-report questionnaires. Why? Because the rating scales are not quite as reliable as the questionnaires. All right, so that's a, probably another topic for another day. But the point is, if you're not measuring, then how do you know where you are? Okay, so with the CESD and with the BEC, there's some very simple rules. Ready? Zero to nine, none. <laughs> Made the tail on that end too long. 10 to 17 mild, 18 to 26 moderate. Well, so you can see that 27 and up, greater than 27, let's say, then we're in the severely depressed range. Now, if you're up about 30, 35, 40, an antidepressant is not going to be a bad direction to go. The trouble is, if you do antidepressants for the mild and the moderately depressed people, you get what? You get basically a placebo response. Well, you might as well sit home and take an aspirin a day. In fact, ironically, aspirin will improve depression slightly because a lot of depressions have inflammation as a component to them. Okay, well, that's again another topic, but the point of that is that you're wasting your money, you're wasting your doctor's time. Everybody loses if you're doing antidepressants for the mild and the moderately depressed. Only people way up here in the severely depressed range. And what, uh, what Fournier et al. and the rest decided was that you had to be rather above this 27 mark. They're using the Hamilton rating scale, so the numbers are slightly different. But you, when you read that through, and then you translate this over to, say, the back of the CSD. Well, okay. Number one, don't take an antidepressant unless you're up in the severely depressed range. Otherwise, yeah, you're probably wasting your time. Number two, measure your response. Measure your response. In other words, when people come to see me, I give them a checklist every time they come in and we see where they are. And uh, I think that it really improves my treatment program. So, bottom line. All right. Now, I've given you some very useful advice here. And there's some things you could do for me that would help me out. If you're not subscribed to my newsletter, I invite you to subscribe. I'll try to put a link down below and you can link up to my website. If, if it doesn't show up for some reason, it's drlynnjohnson.com, D-R-L-Y-N-N-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Subscribe to my newsletter. Find out all kinds of neat and tidy things that will help you out with your life. Number two, give me a rating on this. If you liked this, if you found it helpful, Give me a rating. If you didn't like it, tell me why. I mean, uh, everybody's learning and nobody's perfect and I want to learn. And number three, if you can share this with other people, that helps. I would like, I'd like people to know about these things. I think that the well-informed patient always gets the best care. And the patient that says, well, doctor, what's the half-life on this drug? Well, doctor, uh, what percentage of people are cured by this drug, what percent are improved, what percent are this, what percent are that. Frankly, <laughs> all right, all right, I admit you mess up the doctor's schedule, but frankly, you get better treatment if you're kind of a well-informed, well-educated uh, individual. Well, thanks for listening. Thanks for stopping in. Good to have you here.